Peggy 12. Greetings, knights and dames. Welcome to the fifth volume of our web series, Once Upon a Time in the Sims Medieval. Today you will learn how to rule your new kingdom with the help of strategic objectives known as ambitions. So let us plunge without further hesitation into the world of Once Upon a Time in the Sims Medieval. In the last episode, we discovered the rich and complex world of quests. But quests by themselves would be nothing unless part of a larger gameplay strategy, the ambition of your kingdom. Your kingdom ambition is a long-term objective. According to which ambition you choose, you will endeavor to bring wealth, well-being and knowledge to your kingdom. How to accomplish this? Easy. By raising the competence level of your sims. A doctor of a high level will be capable of healing more sick people and completing more quests. Uh, my name is Dave Motke. I'm an assistant producer for The Sims Medieval. We have a lot of strategy simulation fans on our team, and we want to kind of incorporate some of those elements into this game, um, those feelings of really grand, epic decision-making. We wanted to do that. Um, so we, we put in a lot of, of, of city building features, and the decisions that you're making with those sims is going to affect your kingdom, whether that's increasing the health or the knowledge or the well-being of your society. So the, the decisions that you're making with your sims is really what's driving the kingdom growth. I'm Aaron Cohen, Senior Marketing Director for The Sims Medieval. We created Kingdom Ambitions to make sure there's a lot of variety in what the player could do with their kingdom, and they wanted to give them lots of different paths to go down. Many ambition possibilities await you in the game, but they won't all be available immediately. To unlock new Kingdom Ambitions, you'll need to complete the first Kingdom Ambition of building your kingdom. At the end of every game, new ambitions will reveal themselves. The construction of your town is also up to you. Every building in your kingdom is in your hands. Naturally, each particular building has its own influence on the course of events. First, choose a quest. Successful completion earns you kingdom points, which unlock new buildings for your town and new sims to live in those buildings. The profession and activities of each sim will alter the course of things for your citizens. The quests that you take and the rewards that you receive from those quests directly influence how the people in your town are acting and viewing you. When the king is popular and the, king, and the kingdom is doing well and the citizens are happy, they act happy, they party more, they smile more, they, they, they just look happy. When they're unhappy, when the kingdom's at war, when the, the kingdom's poor, or there's a di disease going around, the citizens will jeer the king, they might throw fruit at him, they might have him assassinated. You'll see more fights among the sims, you'll see more um, arguments, you'll see them actually not working, you'll see them lying on the ground because they're sick. Um, so you're going to see very clear evidence of your sim's happiness or unhappiness depending on how your kingdom's doing. So managing your kingdom well is very important. But don't worry, if these responsibilities prove to be too heavy, take some time out to play how you like. Fancy giving your castle a makeover? Go ahead. Why not treat yourself to a bubble bath before making dinner? Why not start a family even? You can really do anything you like, in fact. And as these ancient pages close, you can be safe in the knowledge that you know almost everything you need to begin life in the world of the Sims Medieval. But come with us one last time for the next episode, where we'll see the first reactions of the fans who've exclusively played the game on your behalf. Miss not then, dear friend, the final episode of Once Upon a Time in the Sims Medieval.